Hey everybody, in this video we're talking about monopolies and perfect price discrimination. What is perfect price discrimination? It's a situation where firms are gonna charge every single individual a different price and the price they're gonna charge them is the maximum price each individual is willing to pay. That is perfect price discrimination. You don't see it a lot in the real world, so what are we doing in our 101 or AP classes when we teach it? We're trying to teach you kind of like two ends of a spectrum when it comes to pricing, okay? One end is no price discrimination at all, okay? Zero price discrimination and the other side is perfect price discrimination. Again, that's all you're going to get, generally speaking, in a 101 or AP class. Your upper division micro classes can get into things that are in between those two different types of extremes. But again, in a 101 or AP class, that's all we're doing. No price discrimination or perfect price discrimination. Now, before I get to this perfect price discriminations and the implications on this graph, I want to talk about no price discrimination. Because when you look at this graph, Maybe you don't feel this way right now or don't think this way right now, but when you look at it, you're actually supposed to know, hey, no price discrimination right off the bat. And why is that? Because you see MR broken away from demand at twice the slope. As soon as you see MR different than demand, you should think to yourself, oh, that's no price discrimination, which is the default of an AP test out there, by the way. Okay, so no price discrimination. Now, why is that? Why is MR broken away from demand when there's no price discrimination? Here it comes, okay? Look, the demand curve is the marginal benefit curve, okay, to the consumer. That's what it is. The demand curve is the marginal benefit curve. In fact, there's a saying here at Econ Busters we love to say, which is the following. Every demand curve, okay, is actually a bunch of dots. And those dots sit above goods, okay? So you got a bunch of dots and they sit above goods. And the vertical distance from a good to that dot is the benefit somebody puts on that good, okay? So that's what the demand curve is. It's a marginal benefit curve. It's showing the benefits that people get from consuming the good. The marginal revenue curve is the additional revenue the firm gets. In a situation of no price discrimination, what's happening there is every time a firm wants to sell another good, they're gonna have to lower the price for everybody. Listen to that. Every time they wanna sell another good, they're gonna have to lower the price for everybody, okay? Now, here's the big thing. The benefit those consumers are receiving from the good is not changing, right? The benefit's not changing. Nothing's happening to the demand curve, but definitely the marginal revenue curve is gonna change because every time that we wanna sell another good, we lower the price for every single Single person that has implications on total revenue and marginal revenue okay that's a big thing and the big thing is the implication on the on the marginal revenue that additional revenue that they get so there you go you get it breaking away at twice the slope but then you get into perfect price discrimination which is what we're focused on here okay in that situation we're gonna charge a price which is the maximum they're willing to pay. Well, what's the maximum they're willing to pay? It's based on their dollar benefit that they get from the good, okay? That's what the marginal benefit curve is showing, is their monetized benefit that they get from the good. And what I mean by monetized is just in dollar values. So again, let me say that again. The maximum somebody's willing to pay is the total benefit in dollar terms they get from the good. So guess what, guys? The price is going to be those dots, okay, right? Those dots that make up the demand curve. So what that means is when you have perfect price discrimination, you're going to get to charge each person a different price. And that price you're going to charge them is the benefit that they get from the good. And so in those situations, the demand curve becomes, okay, the marginal revenue curve. To help bring this point home, we need to understand the following. When you have perfect price discrimination, you will probably never be asked to put price on the vertical axis. Why is that? Because the price is gonna be different for each person. In fact, there's as many prices as there are dots that make up the demand curve. So again, when you get perfect price discrimination, that question is not gonna ask you, you know, or should tell you to show the price because there's a bunch of different prices. The price is equivalent to the dots that make up this demand curve. And remember, demand is the marginal benefit curve. Now, interesting implications. I hope you can kind of tell that I still have that old MR intersecting MC right there, right? This is our level of output with no price discrimination. With perfect price discrimination and the demand becoming the MR curve, MR equals MC right there. 
output actually increases. In fact, as long as there's no externalities, you just got rid of any dead weight loss that you would have had from the monopoly, right? With the monopoly, if you had no price discrimination, this triangle would have been the dead weight loss. With this perfect price discrimination, we're actually having an increase in output and we're gonna produce all the way to where MC equals M, um, uh, uh, MR. And guess what? No dead weight loss. But what is also interesting is if they ask you to locate the consumer surplus, don't show anything. Put consumer surplus equals zero. That's right. Consumers are going to get zero surplus because they're going to be charged a price equal to the benefit they put on the good. In fact, all that's happening here is producer surplus is becoming this entire triangle. We associate this triangle oftentimes with like social surplus or the sur or basically really it's consumer plus producer surplus, the surplus of both market actors. Well, that surplus is now all producer surplus. And they could ask you to show producer surplus or even calculate producer surplus. And you need to know the producer surplus now is this triangle, demand, supply. It's that triangle right there. That's perfect price discrimination. When you have perfect price discrimination, demand is the MR curve. And what we're talking about again is monopoly or uh, market power situations. We already know in the perfect uh, competitive industries, the demand is equal to MR because they're price takers, but it's in these market power situations, perfect price discrimination, demand becomes MR, no price discrimination. Hey, MR breaks away from that demand curve at twice the slope. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.